There is work to be done. Spoony upperclassmen rehearse them in the proper method of reporting to the Commandant of Flying Cadets. Now truly, Flying Cadets and Embryo Air Corps officers. Flying Cadet Gordon reporting his order. Major Stoll says, Mr. Gordon, you are assigned to A Company, 1st Platoon, 3rd Floor, Room 350. I hope you find your stay pleasant here at Randolph. The tactical staff of the Flying Cadet Battalion give final instructions to upperclassmen on drilling the new man. Again, they get organized in new homes. In these barracks, they will live for the next 10 weeks. Each room boasts two or more occupants, likewise beds, desks, clothes closets, and wash basins. Civilian clothes are discarded and the uniform donned. Rooms must be tidied and formations met. Reveille is at 6, taps at 9.30. First comes the barbershop detail. Haircuts are uniform. He likes it. Rogues gallery next. Photographs show height as well as faces. They draw rifles. They are to be soldiers as well as flyers. But there is a purpose to this ground drilling. Muscular coordination, group cooperation. Control of ground discipline means air discipline, and air discipline means safety. The manual of arms is precise, exacting. As soon as proficiency warrants, they will be formed into squads, then platoons. Never before, perhaps, has our cadet found so much significance in physical activity. The busy day ends, and the battalion is formed for sunset retreat. Standing at rigid attention, with uplifted eyes, the cadets salute the slowly descending flag. It is their symbol of strength and unity as well as a peace that is not shattered by sunset guns. They will never outlive the reverence for it felt at such moments. Chow time now, and civilian chefs, the best that money can hire, are preparing dinner for the hungry eatlets. Great baskets of golden brown French fries and those rows of luscious steaks. Boy, can't you just smell them broiling. Let's get out of here before we grab one. But if the chefs are best, so are the eaters. And after a typically active day, how these boys can eat. Great care is given to the diet of the flying cadet, and only the best is good enough. The cadet adjutant comes forward and publishes the order of the day. As soon as orders are published, he sounds off carry on at will. Action starts. The lower classmen have the dubious honor of seeing that the waiters keep all dishes refilled. But later their time will come as upper classmen. This bell means flying and the cadet moves eagerly to the hangar line. The thrill of a new flying field, an unknown instructor, a new type of plane, a new kind of flying awake. No time for boredom here. Several hundred strong in new uniforms, helmets, and goggles. But wait, as we leave the cadet area, we hear a voice. It is the stage commander, Captain Bridget. In the past class, we had no fatalities and few minor accidents. Let's keep up the good work. Remember, never any compromise with safety. The cadets are coming down the line now. Their fate rests with you and you alone. Let's meet them, gentlemen. That will be all. It's a great jump from the primary trainer to this basic trainer. Larger, more powerful motor, more complicated instruments. This ship more nearly approximates the tactical one he someday hopes to fly. This is real military pilot training. Lieutenant Hale greets his four new students cordially. Every Air Corps instructor takes a personal pride in the number of eaglets turned to eagles under his tutelage. The association between student and instructor 
usually ripens into an abiding sense of comradeship. Through the years to come, the student will remember the care and wisdom of his teaching and feel that his own instructor was the best in the service. This first flight, controlled by Captain Bridget in the radio control tower, is one of familiarization. Captain Bridget has all ships tuned in on the control tower and directs their action by radio. By his orders, each flight will taxi out and take off from an assigned portion of the field. The first day's ride is to show the student the controls of the airplane, but to take him over the surrounding country, point out the many auxiliary fields which will be used, and let him get a general air acquaintance with the new course. Captain Bridget says, OK for takeoff. Flights A, B, C, D, and E take off with perfect precision and control. A giant flight of birds, but no confusion, no irregularity. This is Air Corps training. Each ship is in its proper place. The mass pattern held together by a single voice in a far radio tower. The pilots of each flight group usually take this opportunity for some semi-formation practice with their brother pilots. They fly over Randolph Field, letting the student view it from many different angles. They also cover the auxiliary fields and surrounding country, pointing out the one from which flight A will work. Four flights must be made today in order to accommodate all eaglets. In comes flight A landing on a pillow. Taxis to the ramp, drops passengers, takes aboard a fresh crop. While one section flies, another goes to ground school. Instructors are competent and there are no old fashioned washouts. If a student fails for a pilot's rating, he still can qualify as navigator, bomber deer or other specialists. Da -da 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 -da. The Morse code or buzzer goes hand in hand with flying. Flying cadets learn to receive and transmit an average of 17 words per minute. Buzzer is good mental gymnastics. An instructor demonstrates the ease with which an airplane radio functions. One of the most important ground subjects is meteorology or weather analysis. Winds, storm, fog, clouds, lightning. How often will he have occasion in future cross-country flying to reckon with these? No fair weather pilots in the Air Corps. To learn in the hangar the inner workings of the great bird he has flown is to most students pure fascination. And here again, instructors introduce the airplane structure power plant and propeller in a manner to stimulate the eaglet's zeal and interest. The cadets have become adapted to the complete military life and training in the basic type planes is under full sway. Again, we note their complete absorption in flying. It's a man's world here, brimming with activity and fresh experiences. The dual instruction period prior to soloing in the basic trainer is quickly completed. No longer is this airplane a strange and powerful demon which breeds awe in their souls, but a tamed steed fully under control and a joy to fly. Nevertheless, instructors still fly with them from time to time aiding them in new maneuvers and improving their flying technique. It is difficult to believe, as they follow the leader out for a takeoff, that there are not instructors or finished aviators in the cockpit, but the same cadets whose foreheads so recently bore beads of sweat under their first solo.